I would like to welcome everyone back to the ELSIC fall meeting. And um, this morning, we're gonna really focus on some of the technologies that are have been invested in um, as far as robotics and autonomy by NASA. And then in the afternoon, we're gonna have a series of breakout groups to look at um, establishing, operating and maintaining um, the infrastructure on the lunar surface and what the, the needs for autonomy and robotics are in order to do that. So the point of this morning is really to kind of set you up with a baseline of what, what we already have, in, what NASA has already invested in, what people are working on, and to start thinking about how you might plug these elements into the, um, the infrastructure that we will ultimately develop uh, for the lunar surface. But I would like to first pass this off to Nikki Werkheiser, who is the directory, director, <laughs> directory, sorry, Nikki, director of technology maturation at NASA. Nikki is amazing and brilliant and wonderful. There you go. Thank you. Do I need to hold this? Can I probably close the script? Yeah, like okay. I and then I'll wipe it up. I always feel like I should like sing a song or tell a joke. I'm going to hold it like that. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Oh, everybody's awake. Yeah, I'm ready to coffee. All right, okay. Um, all right, just a few uh, things I was going to talk about a little bit this morning and, and welcome everyone here. I really want to thank you all for joining today, and I'm almost giddy to be here in person and see people in 3D. It's been really nice. Um, a few notes I want to talk about. Um, as Jim pointed out yesterday, our last opportunity to meet in person was in late February of 2020. Um, that was, of course, right before the pandemic hit. Um, and I just really want to take a moment to thank the organizing committee for putting a great program together. Um, and especially with this hybrid meeting, you know, it's, it, we're all learning how to do this, right? And I think it's going pretty darn well. And I hope I didn't just jinx us by saying that. But um, I especially want to give a shout out to Rachel and Andrea. Um, they have slept very little. Uh, I'm sure they're looking forward to catching up on some sleep. And personally, I think it's no coincidence that we have the, the time change this weekend so they could fit in an extra hour, which they very much deserve. Um, I also want to thank uh, Bowie State University for hosting us on this beautiful campus. Uh, really, just being in this environment, I find myself uh, filled with optimism and hope. Uh, it's obvious you can feel sincere energy and enthusiasm here um, from the students, as well as the immense belief, support, and, uh, and uh, opportunities that the university leadership is providing them with. So it's been really inspir inspiring to be here. It makes me miss uh, being at university. I um, want to thank SAIC as well um, for, for their support and expertise. We would not have been able to do this meeting without you, so thank you for that. And uh, give a shout out to our audio and visual team who have, you've seen them kind of running around here when it's really loud and it sounds like the voice of God coming down or too low and making sure everything works. So uh, thanks so much with all of that. I also want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for this, um, and not only really for just these two days, but in our focus groups that we have monthly. Um, that's really our chance to actively engage and have an open, consistent dialogue with you, and I really want to encourage everyone to continue participating in those. If you're not yet participating in those, I, I really want to encourage you to get signed up. Uh, now is the time, and I think um, that's probably my favorite part of the consortium model. Um, the forums have been established for around a year now, uh, with, and the key objective is really to um, have a platform where we can come together for this meaningful, open, consistent dialogue. Um, and I believe that now we have that firmly rooted and we have a vested community that has mutual interest in lunar sustainability. So um, there's a few things I've noted through that year-long evolution that I wanted to share with you. I have noticed that the focus groups are really coming together to, to share concerns, um, that do affect multiple stakeholders. Um, and, and that includes things like identifying common gaps and uh, issues and brainstorming potential solutions for those. I've also noticed that the stakeholders are reaching out to each other um, and exploring real potential synergies. And I've seen that across universities and industry, including uh, new space, traditional space, small business, large business, uh, venture capitalists, as we heard from yesterday, nonprofits um, and international entities as well as well as NASA and other government agencies, of course. Um, so uh, I think that's, that's really important. And the more that we can diversify that engagement, uh, the better for all of us. I've also seen really an increasing openness as we've been meeting regularly, uh, with many of you sharing your work, as well as your willingness to mentor and support each other, which I think is really key. 
but we're not naive to the fact that we can't have all of the, the conversations in, in open public and that there's a lot of sensitive and proprietary efforts going on as well. So I do want to remind everyone that we've built it into the structure of the task um, that APL can do site visits, uh, virtual or in person, um, to have those more one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations. And as Jim mentioned yesterday, uh, the number of NASA staff that we have participating um, in this meeting and in the, the virtual uh, focus groups um, and across various mission directorates as well and centers uh, is really a testament uh, that we truly want to hear what you have to say and to find new ways to work together. So I hope that we can keep that up. Now, I'd like to spend a few minutes uh, just before we get started to reflect on what we heard yesterday a little um, and touch on where we're gonna continue to focus today more. Uh, so yesterday we heard from Jim Ryder and he provided an update on the broad range of uh, the space tech uh, activities and opportunities underway. Uh, we also heard insightful perspectives from university leaders and students, uh, civic leaders, and also venture capitalists and engineers and scientists. So I think it was a really good day. Um, hopefully through all of these discussions, you've witnessed that there really is a consistent theme and that we're serious about going back to the moon. And there's no doubt that there are really key technologies uh, that we need in order to do that. And when I say we, I do mean all of us. Um, this is really our space program. It does belong to all of us. And I truly believe with all of my heart that it's gonna take this full community if we want to reach uh, lunar sustainability. So this is the real crux of uh, the very first action I took after LSI was announced um, in, in talking with Jim was to start the process of establishing this consortium. Um, not just as another forum that we would get together a couple times a year, um, but as I mentioned, a meaningful way to come together and to plan as a community and in order to leverage those mutual strengths and to execute that plan. So in order to really create those uh, novel technologies, it's imperative that we have baked into our fundamental approach to seek solutions from a broad and diverse audience and that we not only do so we don't do so by providing overly prescriptive solicitations, but rather focus on uh, instituting novel approaches, not only to our technologies, but to our acquisition and collaboration models. Um, and so that focus is really on getting your ideas and how to get those needed capabilities developed on the moon by working together. So uh, we have to really assertively leverage those innovative ways that we can work together that are complementary but different. Um, and we have different strengths um, across the government and industry and academia. Uh, so if we're serious about accelerating those needed technologies, this I think is how we have to do it. And again, this really starts by establishing that consistent ongoing dialogue with this community. And I just wanna say, I think APL has done a real phenomenal job getting that established um, and setting up this structure, which is a little different than the more traditional type of uh, forums such as this. So um, talking about the uh, focus groups a little more, we have the key uh, six LSI capability areas that we've talked about. Um, and in these forums, NASA can share information such as our architecture objectives, our key technology gaps, and really amplify the opportunities like what Jim talked about yesterday to make sure that we're getting the word out across um, not only our traditional space participants, but um, a whole broad audience, right? And I think we heard um, some of that yesterday from the venture capitalists too, is how do we reach um, those different target audiences that may not always be the traditional space audience that we're used to. Um, so today now we're going to hone in on more technical discussions focused on autonomy and robotics, as Rachel said. Uh, we did select this as this, uh, this workshop's special focus uh, because really it's inherently in almost every single thing that we're planning to do on the lunar surface. Um, and if I'm being completely candid, it's the integration for this and some of the TRL development for the autonomy and robotics technologies, um, particularly in terms of reliability and maintainability um, that's on my, uh, my short list of things that keep me up at night. So I'm really excited that we're gonna be talking about that. So I look forward to today's presentations. Um, I'm particularly excited to hear your questions and to engage in some open dialogue today as we start to dive down a little more. And as Arthur C. Clarke said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And so to that, I say, let's go make some magic. 